Hello guys, a really quick video for you today for a really quick build. This is Bandai's Super Star Destroyer from the Star Wars universe. Like all of these smaller Bandai kits, the instructions are inside the lid. In this particular case they are a bit difficult to read and sometimes the orientation can be hard to work out, but luckily all of the parts are keyed so you can't get them in the wrong way. Inside the box we have two white sprues and one black sprue. The white sprues contain the parts for the actual Super Star Destroyer itself, while the black sprue is simply the stand. If you haven't seen a Bandai kit before, then I think you'd be very impressed by the level of detail that they managed to get on these. This kind of minute detail without any extra parts being added seems to be something that Bandai really specialise in. And just to be clear, this kit is a snap together kit as well, there's no glue required. And genuinely, of all the Bandai kits that I've built, um, I haven't ever required glue on any of them, I don't think. The tolerances are really, really nice, they're perfectly tight, and the parts hold together very well. So I'll let you watch the build while I talk a little bit. Bandai don't say what scale this kit is, but we can work it out. Now this kit is 19 centimeters long, while the real, for want of a better word, Super Star Destroyer is 19 kilometers long. 19 kilometers is 1.9 million centimeters. So if we divide that 1.9 million centimeters by the 19 centimeters of the kit, that gives us 100,000. So this kit is a 1 to 100,000 scale kit. Or in other words, every millimeter on this kit represents 100 meters on the actual Star Destroyer. I don't think this kit is available in Europe. Bandai have the um, Star Wars license for Asia, which is where I bought this. I know that in Europe, Revel tend to release the Star Wars models, although they're not, um, they're not the same as the uh, Bandai things. They're not just a rebadged um, Bandai kit. They are different. And sometimes Revel do strange things as well. So all of the Bandai figures, for example, are 1 uh, scale. Whereas for some reason, Revel have just released the Mandalorian figures in Europe at 1 to 9 scale, which is a little bit odd. However, it is quite hard and very expensive to get hold of these Bandai kits now I'm in Europe. The only slight difficulty I had with this construction was this top piece here, where the instructions weren't 100% clear about the order that these pieces need to go in. And you do have to be a bit careful because if you snap one of these Bandai pieces into place, it's very hard to get them back out again. Finally we have the three piece stand here and that will become a very useful handle when it comes to painting. So my first step for painting was to give the entire ship a coat of black. In reality, uh, that's multiple coats of black because you think you've painted it and then you turn it to a, a slight angle and there's so much detail on here that you realize you can still see white plastic. So this is after the first coat, so you, you may well see some white plastic here. But once I was satisfied that everything was covered with black, I then painted the outer color of the ship and that was done in RAF medium sea grey, the World War II colour from AK Real Colours. Once that paint on the outer area was dry, it was masked off and the inner area with all the detail was painted in a slightly bluer grey colour. I just wanted to have a little bit of a distinction between those two, uh, those two pieces. That colour was mixed by adding a tiny drop of blue to the medium sea grey and a tiny amount of black. Thank you. 
Although it might not be strictly accurate, I wanted the engines to stand out, so I painted those in metallic grey. Although a traditional pin wash might not be fully appropriate for a model on this scale, I did have a go at trying to bring out some of these recesses. Now, I'm very cautious of this Bandai plastic because it does not like enamel thinner. I know this from experience with my Y-Wing, which I liberally coated in um, a uh, enamel thinned wash back when I made it a few years ago, and it has slowly crumbled on my shelf since then. So this wash is some Vallejo model color acrylic thinned with water. I painted the glow of the engine by putting a base of white down inside and then painting clear red and clear yellow over the top. We can see on some images of the Superstar Destroyers, although I think these are fan fiction images, um, sort of different colour panels and so on. I didn't really want to do that because that panel detail is not on the model itself, but instead what I chose to do is some dry brushing over the raised areas. The, uh, the built up area in the centre was quite easy to do that with because obviously there's quite a lot of detail there. It was a little bit harder to do it on the flat areas where there is detail, but it's absolutely minute. And there we go guys, that was my build of Bandai's 1 to 100,000 scale Super Star Destroyer from Star Wars. Um, this wasn't even really a one day build, um, it built in about 20 minutes. I suppose really the biggest delay in making it was the, um, the waiting for the paint to dry between the different coats. But it was a really nice fun build, it's going to look nice on my shelf and uh, it was a nice change from uh, all that super focused um, hyper detailed um, Spitfire from uh, Airfix I've been working on recently. So guys, thank you very much for watching that. I hope you enjoyed it. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. And until the next video, I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.